students, you are welcome to this lesson, lesson six of our year one, semester two, course manual. Today's lesson will focus on basic trigonometry. Uh, our substrand is trigonometrical ratios and applications to real life. Our scope will cover misconceptions and barriers in the teaching of trigonometric ratios in specific, but generally mathematics. We'll also look at the basic trig ratios, uh, popularly referred to as SOKATWA, and then look at the applications of these ratios in real life. For a start, I need you to take a look at the triangle here. Take a good look at the sketch of that triangle or that shape. See how many triangles we can get out of that shape. I hope you are trying your hands on it. How many triangles can we get from the shape? I can hear a whisper, five. Nine. I can hear another one, nine. You have done very well, but please Take a good look and try again because there are as many as you cannot imagine. So keep trying and then we'll see the one who has the highest number of triangles in that diagram. Right. Um, we will hear from you in the comment sessions about how many triangles you have been able to identify from that shape. Now, our first concern is about the conceptions in teaching mathematics in general, and then uh, specifically trigonometrical ratios. Our very first concern is the fact that students usually say mathematics is for men, and so uh, when women are found in mathematics classroom, they are usually uh, adamant to whatever goes on in the mathematics class. They either give up on lessons or are not ready to contribute their quota in the learning sessions. Uh, I think this is a big misconception that it needs to be well dealt with. If we come to the specific situation of trigonometry, trigonometry for that matter, uh, the misconception is that it doesn't have a real uh, uh, life application. So students would usually ask, where would this one apply? Where would we make use of this topic? But the truth is that trigonometry has a lot to do with our real life situations, from measurements to angles and their measurements and what have you. Um, a particular reference is to the situation where someone needs to find the height of a tree. And the person has no, um, no instrument, as it were, to be able to reach the top of the tree. Trigonometry can help us find the height of the tree if we know the distance the person is standing away from the tree. And then we are able to tell that distance and we know the angle the top of the tree makes with the, uh, the eye level of the person who wants to find that measurement. And so this is another cases in life uh, are situations in which we can apply trigonometry. Now, if we have a right angle triangle, basically trigonometry will be helping us to be able to name or identify sides of the right angle triangle with reference to an angle. So if this is a right angle triangle, we have an angle of reference, let's call it theta. And it is a right angle triangle because it has a 90 degree angle in there. Theta happens to be an acute angle. And so with this, we can have a lot of um, 
things to do about that triangle. For example, if we label our sides A, B, and C, we can name all the sides. From our previous lesson, we realized that there's only one side we can name. That was with reference to Pythagoras' theorem. And that is the longest side of a right angle triangle or the, angle, the side that is facing the 90 degree angle. And that side is known as the hypotenuse. Now, with reference to the angle theta, we can name all the other sides of the triangle. Now, theta is an interior angle in the triangle, and so the, the line or the side A facing that angle theta is referred to as the opposite side. And so the last and the final side of the triangle will be called the adjacent side. So here we are with our right angle triangle. We have three sides, and all the sides have been labeled or named accordingly. And remember, the name of the other two, apart from the hypotenuse side, is based on the angle of reference. And so if we have another triangle, Right angle triangle for that matter and our angle of reference is here alpha can we name the sides of that triangle I am sure you can and so you have your hypotenuse being the the side facing the right angle the side that is facing the angle alpha will be the opposite side and the last side will be our adjacent side now, we'll be interested in finding the basic ratios for these um, triangles with reference to angle theta and alpha. Now, the basic trig ratios are sine, cosine, and tangent. They are ratios because they make use of two, of two sides of the right angle triangle at a time. So the ratio for sine, if we are making reference to our angle theta, the ratio for sine is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. And so... For want of easy remembrance, we would usually say sine has a ratio opposite divided by hypotenuse. And that is how come we get the so as the short form for the ratio sine. If we come to cosine, usually we will write cos of the angle. So we'll call it cos theta. The short form for cosine is cos. And so that ratio would give us the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side. So with reference to our triangle right here, the adjacent side is labeled C and our hypotenuse is labeled B. And so that is how we can get the ratio for cos theta or cosine of theta. When we come to tangent also, we have tan to represent tangent. And so tan of theta will give us adjacent divided by the opposite adjacent divided by the opposite so here with reference to our first diagram we have the adjacent side being the label c and the opposite side being labeled a so where does the so katwa come in it comes in when we try to simplify our ratio just by taking 
into consideration the first letters of our ratio. So sine theta will give us opposite divided by hypotenuse, and that gives us our uh, so. What then will be the short form or the uh, key um, acronym for remembering cos theta, the ratio for cos theta? The letters we are considering are C O, sorry, C A and H. And so we'll have K. And finally, for tangent, we have T, A, and O. So we have T, A, and O. A little correction here. Opposite divided by adjacent. So we have T, O, and A giving us tua. And so, so tua basically refers to the basic ratios in a tri trigonometry concept. And so, we can take time off and look at the relationship that exists among these trig ratios. Sign cosine and tangent. <laughs>